boom, recording. Here we go. All right. So today, very, very exciting. Today, we are going to talk about um, titles and credits. So we're going to go over all of the tech stuff. So I promised you that I would give this lesson today because you're all working on getting your rough cut to final cut. Um, and part of taking your rough cut to a final cut is using titles, using credits, uh, making sure you put in all the text in a nice, clean, professional way. So today we are going to discuss um, both of those things. And it's a heck of a lot more than maybe you thought it was in the past. It's a whole lot more than putting a little star wipe on it in iMovie that says, thanks for watching. Okay, remember, we're not doing that anymore. Okay, we are doing legit professional titles and credits, uh, which is what we are talking about today. So I'm going to open up my premiere here. I already have it open. Cool, 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 cool. Lots of nodding heads of approval. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So here is my premiere. I just opened up a random video that I had. Um, my roommate, the raccoon, um, was live streaming the other day. And so I happened to record it. Um, and this is just a very short clip of that. Um, and I thought that this was a nice, easy, because it's so short, it is not going to take forever to load. So I just threw that in here. And this is going to be the basis for our learning about titles and credits. Now, titles and credits. Um, now, you've, you've put in text before, right? You've done this before because I had you do it for your video scavenger hunts, for example. So if you remember way back when, um, you remember that you learned how to put text into your videos. Um, and I didn't teach you a whole lot about it, but I kind of let you figure it out. And then you added text to your experimental films. And that was all great. And that was all wonderful. And now I'm going to teach you how to do it right. Now we're going to talk about like the actual structure with, in which like the film industry does these titles and credits. So we'll start with titles because that's I'm not going to talk as much about titles. But for titles, there's a couple of ways that you can do text. So, for example, if you see my mouse here, I can, for example, just hit the type tool and draw a box and start typing. And here is my title. And just like that, I have a title. I can move it around. And if I go to my effect controls over here, here it appears in my effect controls and all the, all the changes that I might want to make to it are here. So I want it to be in the center. I can put it in the center and then I can like put it here in the middle. Um, I can change the font here by clicking here and I can change the font to any number of things. Like maybe I want like an an Indiana Jones style thing, or maybe I want like a, what else do I have in here? I got a lot of stuff in here. Here's like a kind of a spooky one with blood or something. I don't know. Sludge. And then we've got, the, um, let's see, this is kind of a cartoon thing. So there we go. That's kind of a cartoony font. So there we go. I got my title. It's cartoon font. It's great. Um, and I can adjust it with these parameters. I want to stretch the letters out. I can do that. That's kind of cool. I can, um, I can, if I had more than one line, I could stretch the spaces between it. So that's cool. I don't have more than one line. I can make it bold. I could make it like a little slanted and stuff like that. Um, I can change the fill. If I want the fill to be a different color. If I want to make this like kind of orange. There you go. There's my orange title. Kind of nice. All right. I can put a stroke on it if I want. So there's like a nice white stroke and I can make it bigger. All right. So there's a lot of things that you can do here and, and, and you can keyframe this stuff. So if you want to make your title move around, you can actually keyframe this. Here's a stopwatch. So I know that I can keyframe it um, as well as these other things. I can keyframe the position. I can keyframe the scale. Um, so if, for example, I want my title to like kind of push in a little bit, um, I can keyframe this there. I made a keyframe. Um, and, uh, let's see here. Let me, let me give you an example. So I made a keyframe. There it is. And I'll go to the end here of my title. And then I'm going to make a keyframe and I'm going to make the scale bigger. And it's going to, I don't know why it's moved. Well, I do know why it's moving because I didn't set my anchor point, but now you can see it's like getting bigger, but it's also moving, which is not what I want. So I could change that as well. I could change that by changing the anchor point, or I could change that by changing the actual like location in the motion here. So these are all things that I could do. There's my anchor point right there. So let's actually change it so it looks better. I'm gonna take my anchor point and put it in the middle. There we go. Now I will do 
now we'll do my new keyframe. And now I'll make it bigger. There we go. So there's my title. Boom. Title, baby. Looking so nice. Looking so clean. Okay. So that's that's a nice, easy way to do the titles. You just take this little, once again, you take the type tool and you just start drawing right there on the program monitor. And it all appears in the effects controls. This is the new way that Premiere likes to do text. But it's not the best way. Pro tip. It's not the best way. I'm going to show you the best way here in a minute. Okay, but this is the way that they like to do it. This is the way they want you to do it. This is the way they're probably going to make us all do it in the very near future. Um, but for now, there are some other ways. Before I show you my preferred method, um, I will show you um, if you go up here to the different layout, the different layouts here, you do have one called graphics. And if you open up graphics, it'll open up all these cool preset sort of templates here on the side of your screen, which is great. If you're doing some broadcast work, for example, they have a lot of like lower thirds. So if you're doing like a news report or if you have like a documentary or something like that, you want to do like a news report. They have a lot of options here um, for lower thirds as well as like larger. See, like here's like some sports things or some gaming things, things like that. Um, so a lot of like presets that you can work with. Um, but they also have titles so if you look we've got um here's the film title so i could put this in i could just drag it right in and it's thinking about it there we go and here's my film title and it's very cool and very exciting so if i wanted to change this look at all this stuff look at all this stuff um so if i want to change this stuff i can change this and be like this is going to be called um raccoon tunes because that's the name of my thing and the episode name, what episode am I on now? Let's see. I just filmed episode 21. I think I'm on episode, I think the next one's at 21 or 22, maybe. I don't know. We'll say it's episode 22. And now I have this nice title with my own. And I'm like, oh man, that's so cool. I feel like I'm JJ Abrams or Christopher Nolan because of all the lens flares, right? So it's like, there you go. Like you can, you can, yeah. So like, there are some cool options there um, in this graphic editing place, which is, which is kind of nice um, as you can see. And you can actually get more of them. You can actually search the internet and browse. And there are multiple different templates that you can actually download and install into your premiere by putting them in like key locations. So it'll tell you like to download it. And some of them you have to buy and some of them are free. And some of them, you know, you're, you just, they're like temporary, but they're not like complete. Like it's like you have some parts to it, but not all of it. And you kind of download it and then you put it into like specific folders in Premiere. And then when you reload Premiere, um, it will be in there. And you can also look on Adobe stock here. So like here's Adobe stock and you could actually look and they have additional ones here in Adobe, in Adobe stock if I want to download some. Um, so there's, there's free ones, see? Uh, and then there's premium ones, ones that you got to pay for. And there's some cool ones in here. Um, but I don't know that you want to pay for anything. We should get freestyle to buy some of these. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll look into that. Um, but here's like, but here's a whole bunch of free ones. And there's some cool ones in here. So there are some cool titles and some cool graphics and some different things that you can use. Um, and then you can save them here on your side. So on, on the side here um, by downloading them and putting them into your Premiere folder. So that's really cool. Um, very, 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 very cool stuff um, to work on titles. Now, the final thing about titles and the point that I want to make is titles um, are an important part of your movie. So um, let me, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second so you can look at my face because I'm making a point. And you know when I'm making a point, I'm going to make you look at my face. And here's the point that I'm going to make on titles. And the point that I want to make about titles is that every title is unique and every title is different. Think about your favorite movies. Think about the movie posters. If we were in my classroom, this would be the part where I had where I have you look around at all my movie posters. OK, think about think about the titles of your favorite movies. OK, so like my favorite movies are like the Indiana Joneses and the Back to the Futures and, you know, things like that. Right. Think about those titles. They all have a unique title with their own font a lot of the times, right? A unique title that fits that movie, that works for that film, that was designed specifically for that film, okay? All right, the point that I wanna make here is you do not have to be limiting yourself to some stock 
type of font or some stock type of graphic that you downloaded for your movie. You don't have to do that. Okay. Like your freestyle students, you're a little more savvy than that. Like you can make your own title. You can make a title that fits your movie because Premiere will take any kind of media asset, right? You can drag all kinds of stuff into Premiere as I made clear way back at the beginning of junior year, right? So you can, for example, go into Photoshop, create a cool title that you like, or, or go into Illustrator and make a cool title that you like, either one, doesn't matter, and then export something and then import that into Premiere. So for example, I will show you my example. Um, so for example, here is my, um, whoop, let me move you guys over here. Here is my, here's my movie. I imported my logo for my cartoon stuff. So here's my logo for my cartoon stuff. And it's super big because I made it in 4k and this video is not in 4k. Um, so I'll shrink it down and then here's my title. So now I have a nice clean title and I made this transparent background. So if I want my title to appear over my video, there it is. It appears over my video and that looks really nice. That looks nice and clean. It has my brand on it. Um, this is not, you know, like a film. This is not like a cinematic masterpiece that I'm working with here. This is just a little clip, right? But for your movie, you can make your cool, interesting, unique title and you can put it over your movie to, and it's going to fit your film. You don't have to be limited to just a certain type of font. So if you want to go the extra mile here because you really care about your film and you want to have an interesting and unique title that fits, that was designed specifically for your film, you can do that. This is just a PNG file, a PNG file with a transparent background. So I can, I can move it around. Can I move it around? Let me move it around. Come on. There we go. I can move it around and it'll fit wherever I want it to fit um, and look the way I want it to look. And then I can even put transitions on it if I want. So like if I want to, if I want to like wipe this in, for example, or dissolve it in, let's, let's wipe it in. Cause we never wipe stuff in. I'll do like a, I'll do a fun wipe. I'm going to show you, um, let's see, I'll do a gradient wipe. Yeah. Gradient wipes are kind of weird and cool looking. Okay. Ready? I'm going to make this nice and big though. So you can really see it. So here's my title, and it's got a gradient wipe in. Ready, go. Whoosh. Kind of cool, right? Kind of cool. Kind of cool. So you can be creative with your titles. That's the point that I want to make, is don't limit yourself to just a font that you picked. Don't limit yourself to Times New Roman, right? Like, we've all seen that before. Like, you can be more creative than that. You can create your own interesting title. Now, you're not going to do that for all your credits, because that would take way too long. But you can be creative in the way that you display your title sequences and your credits. Think about like the opening movies or TV shows where you've seen opening title sequence. Did you know they actually give out awards for like opening title sequences of TV shows? Did you guys know this? This is pretty cool. They actually give out awards for that because it's like, this is really cool or this is really creative. And you can have a lot of fun or creativity when you're making like an opening title sequence or something like that. There's a lot of fun ways that you can display the credits or display the titles or things like that. Okay, so now I'm going to teach you how to do closing credits. And this is where I'm going to show you. Now, you can make closing credits by going to the little, the little tool thing um, like we've done in the past by going to the little type tool and drawing a box on there and making your credits. I'm going to show you the better way, though. This is the better way. Okay, this is the way that I like to do titles. Uh, and it shows that I'm old because I've been editing in Premiere for a long time. But this is the better way. And we'll see how long Premiere keeps this option for us because I have a feeling they're going to get rid of it at some point in the future. Um, but this is still the best way. And you will see why here in a minute. So I want to make my end credits. And I could do this with titles too if I wanted to. So I'm going to make my end credits here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, New. And I'm going to go to oops, File, New. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go to legacy title and you know it's old because it says legacy so i'm going to go to legacy title and when i create a legacy title it's going to come up with this thing and it's going to say okay what what settings do you want well this video that i shot that i recorded this in in zoom because it was live streamed um so it's just 720p and it's actually 25 frames per second because zoom 
records in 25 frames per second for some reason. I don't know why, but that's whatever. So I'm going to call this my credits, my end credits, because that's what this is going to be. And then I'm going to say, OK, and then I'm going to get this cool box that comes up. And that's great, but I'm missing all my options. So I need to uh, I need to uh, reset my layout here. Um, Here's my, uh, let's see here. Why won't it let me see everything? Okay, let's try this again. There we go. Okay, so here's all my cool stuff. So here is my, and this is my, this is my program monitor and it's gonna draw where I want it to draw. So if, for example, if, for example, um, my slider over here was in the video, then you'd see the video here. But I'm going to make my end credits over black, so I'm going to have it over black. OK, so here I'm going to make my end credits. So I, I, if I can draw a little box here, and I can be like a film, because I'm so like artistic by Matt. And I'll be like, yeah, that's me. And then I can position this where I want it to be. And I can make it in center and all that kind of stuff. And then I have all these options over here, which I really like, like all these options. I got my letting and I got my kerning and I got my tracking. And I got my baseline shift and I've got all kinds of stuff. I can add shadows and textures and backgrounds and all kinds of wonderful things that I can because that I can do with. I can change my font, which is wonderful. Um, we'll go with this one. I don't know why. That's just the first one I saw. Actually, I don't like that one. Um, let's do a different one. I just want I want something clean. Just give me like Arial. I want Arial bold. That's what I want. There we go. Very clean. Okay. All right. So there's a film by Matt. Bum, 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 bum. And that's great. And that's a one way that you can make your title. That's one way that you can make your credits. But we want to make scrolling credits. I want my credits to scroll like in the movies. I want it to look awesome. So that's cool. So here's like one way that I could make like the first part of my credits. But let's say I want to make a whole lot more than that. So let's say, oops. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, all right. So let's say I'm working with all the people that helped me on my movie. So I got my cast members. So I've got, um, I'm just going to start naming some characters that are in my movie. There's, um, there's Martha. Uh, and then there's Joey, the character Joey. And then there's the character um, Sue Bob. And uh, I don't know why all my characters sound like they're from the South, but that's okay. Um, then we've got... Um, you know, and then after my characters, I'm going to leave a space. And we had um, the people that helped me. So we have like um, the person who did costumes and we had the person who did locations. Uh, and then we had the person who did sound and so on and so forth. I'm very quickly running out of room, as you can see. Um, I, I can keep stretching this area down, but I'm running out of room and this is too big. I don't need this credits to be so, 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 so big. So I'm going to change the size. There we go. All right. And now I've got some credits that look good. But now I've got like the character names and I have the jobs. But now I got to add in the other part, right? I've got to add in the, the, the people who did these jobs. So what I'm going to do, this is, this is the cool part. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is cool. I'm going to align this stuff to the side. And then I'm going to put this over here. Right. And then I'm going to copy this control C and paste it control V. And now I've got two of them. Oh, there are two of them. Okay. And now I'm going to line this one to the left. You see what's going on here. You see what's happening. You see what's happening. I know, I know, I know. All right. And now I can go in here and I can change. So like Martha was played by Bryn because she's front and center on my screen right now. And Joey was played by Jamie. 
And Sue Bob was played by Izzy. And the costumes were done by Jonah. And who else is on my screen? Reed. Reed did locations. And the rest of you are all hiding. So none of you get credit. None of you get credit. Sound was done by my friend, Ryan. Um, I guess. All right, so now I've got these cool credits and they line up and I have that nice clean gutter here in the middle and I can adjust this a little bit. I can use these sort of like hash marks to kind of gauge like where I am. Um, and now this is cool. This is nice. This is going to be nice and clean. And I can like keep entering credits as long as I want to go, uh, which is great, which is wonderful. And it's going to be very, very professional and clean looking. But Mr. Taylor, you're asking, how do we make it scroll? I'm so glad you asked. Because it's easy. It's with the push of a button. You see this little thing right here? See, it's got a little arrow on it. It's like, hey, this is the scrolling credits button because it's like got an arrow. So you just hit this button and it's like, hey, yeah, I want this to roll. And I would like it to start off screen and I would like it to end off screen. And then I'll say, okay. And when I'm done working on all of my credits, I'm just going to hit this little X. And now it appears here as an asset in my bin right there. There's end credits. I'm just gonna drag it in and put it there. And if I press play, there's my credits. Isn't that wonderful? I know it's like black magic. Okay, now if I want this to be faster or slower, it's just a time thing. I'm just gonna stretch this or squash it. So if I want it to be slower, I'll stretch it out like that. And now it's gonna play really slowly. Don't, don't do this. This is bad. It's too slow. But it's like Star Wars. Nope, nope. No, it's not. But it's like Star Wars. Nope. No, it's not. Star Wars is a mess anyway. You shouldn't look to them for as an example. Okay. All right. And then, actually, we're going to talk about Star Wars here in a second. Uh, or I can make it, like, really, really short. Okay. So you got to stretch it out to be the appropriate length. And we will talk about what the appropriate length is here in a moment. But that's basically it. Um, super easy. And this is the, again, this is the legacy credit. So you go to File, New, and you go to legacy title. And I, pr I do all my titles in this way. I do my titles and my credits and any text in legacy title just because that's what we always used to do. So that's what I'm used to. You don't have to do it this way. Um, I, I think it's better this way. Um, I, think, I, I don't think I'm the only one who thinks it's better this way. I know a lot of editors and filmmakers who prefer doing it this way. Um, however, I do suspect that Premiere will probably get rid of it at some point because whenever they use the word legacy, that usually means it's on like its last legs and they're going to get rid of it, which means in the future, we'll probably have to do these titles in the effect controls by keyframing and stuff like that, which is a big pain in the butt. I don't want to have to keyframe if I don't want to. I just want to push the button. Um, so I'm going to keep fighting to keep legacy titles intact, but I suspect that um, it's on its last legs, which is why I wanted to teach you all these methods. Um, because maybe you prefer one or the other, um, or maybe one will become no longer in use. It's important to know the other method as well. So several different ways in which you can create titles. You can create your own title right here on the program monitor and keyframe it. You can add in a cool graphics template from somewhere. You can add in your own title that you created in Photoshop or Illustrator. Uh, and you can also do the legacy titles to create your title or your credits. You can do credits in all of these methods as well now you are all expected to have professional title and profession looking credits professional looking credits at the end of your movie these are your things that i expect you to have on your film um, for your final cut so make sure that um that you are doing these things okay gone are the days that we are doing iMovie stuff with you know, things like that. So which brings us to the next part that I want to discuss, which is, OK, I understand how to create the titles now. But what do the titles actually consist of? Like what? Like, I know I'm not supposed to put thanks for watching. Um, like, what am I supposed to put? Like, what order do they need to be in? Does it matter? And the answer is yes, it does matter. Uh, in fact, the industry has a very precise way in which the credits must be delivered. Um, because these are because credits are really important in the movie industry. If you work in the film industry, credits like more important than getting paid, quite frankly, um, because you get screen credit. That's something that you can 
point at every time you're, you're looking to get a new job and be like, I worked on this film. There's my credit. It's on my IMDb. There it is. Like, it's not hidden anywhere. Like, that's my name. All right. Which brings me to my soapbox moment. OK, this is my soapbox moment. If I was in class, you would imagine me standing on a soapbox preaching the good word. And the good word today is credits are important, ladies and gentlemen. Credits are important. You, these people worked really, really hard to entertain you for two hours. OK, the least you can do is watch their name go by for a few seconds. OK, now some of you, some of you think you might want to work in this industry. OK, all right. That might be you one of these days. Okay, I've had my name in the credits of a movie before. It's an awesome feeling. OK, don't you want people to sit there and watch the movie and see your name go by, even if it's just for a second? OK, that's important. You should be watching the credits. The credits are part of the movie. I don't care if they're 10 or 15 minutes long. Alfonso Caron looking at you. OK, it doesn't matter. You still need to sit there. And you need to watch the credits because it's not just about appreciate, appreciating the people who worked on the film. OK, and I feel this is particularly important for us in this particular age and your particular generation, because y'all have no attention span. And this is an important thing that I need to address with all of you, because. When you finish watching a movie, there's a moment there where you need to allow your mind to come out of that movie. OK, you just been engrossed. I'm being serious here. You just been engrossed in a movie for two hours, right? Your mind has been transported and into this world that does not exist. But you believed in it because you allowed your suspension of disbelief to remain intact. So you now believe in this world. OK, all right. And then the movie ends. And so many of us just, OK, uh, uh, movie's over. Let's go. And you and your friend are gone and you're already out the door and you're already talking about something totally different. And then half an hour later, you get home and mommy asks you, oh, hi, honey. Did you have fun? Did you like the movie? And you sit there and you think to yourself. Did I like the movie? I don't even did I like the movie. You don't even know because you've already taken your mind somewhere else. OK. All right. When you watch the credits, OK, a composer spent countless hours composing a specific piece of music just for the end credits that doesn't appear anywhere else in the film. OK, that music is there for a reason. OK, because when you finish watching that movie, that is a moment for you to allow your mind to digest what you have just seen. OK, it's like in film class when we show somebody's work and then we stop and we talk about it afterwards. We don't just immediately show someone else's work. OK, we watch the film and I ask you, what did you think? And you all and you're all really quiet, but you're all thinking about it. OK, I encourage you, I implore you, I admonish you and exhort you. Stay for the credits, folks. Stay for the credits. OK, my family hates going to watch movies with me because I will not leave until after the credits are over. Plus, there's always end credit scenes now. Everyone does this. There's always these end credit scenes because the filmmakers want you to stay for the credits and they want to reward you for your good filmic knowledge and appreciation for staying through the credits. Because honestly, it really does make a difference. Try it. Try it. And if you don't think it makes a difference, I would be surprised. But try it. The next time you go watch a movie, movie theaters are open now, by the way. Go support your local theater. OK, the next time you go watch a movie, Stay for the credits. Allow yourself to digest and think about what you just saw. Did you see a good movie? Did you see a bad movie? How did you feel about it? How did that movie make you feel? Analyze your film students now. Analyze the effect of the movie on you, the effect of the movie on your persona, on your emotion, on your feeling. What was effective? What wasn't effective? Why was that effective? Think about it and digest it. Allow the music that was specifically composed for this moment of digestion. OK, allow that music to enter your mind and swell over you as you're thinking about stuff. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you will get something more out of that movie than you ever did before. You will have a different experience coming out of that movie. It's like the experience of waking up from a dream. It takes a little while. OK, stay for the credits. Because those people worked hard because you might work in this industry someday and because you will have a better movie watching experience if you do. That's my soapbox spiel for the day. I feel like I nailed it um, now.
there is, I told you there's a rule to this. There is a rule to this. Okay. I'm going to share my screen here so you can see what I am looking at. And I will share this document with you at the end of class. This is a reference guide for credits that I got by a guy named Zach who posted it on his blog. And I love it. It's like super, super clear, except um, this should be, this should be capitalized. Come on, Zach, get with the program. Jeez. All right. So this is a reference guide for credits. He talks about the procedure in which opening credits are done. So if you go to a movie and you see credits at the beginning of your movie, there's actually rules about whose name, whose name comes first. Because in Hollywood, as you're going to come to learn in Hollywood, people are very, very egotistical. And it matters to them what order their name appears, even if it's like, is my name in front of so-and-so's name? Because I don't like that person. Okay, it's true. Okay, there are a bunch of babies in Hollywood, which is why Hollywood's also falling apart. Okay, so you want to make sure you want to make sure that you follow all these rules because all these unions, all these unions, the Screen Actors Guild, the Directors Guild and the Writers Guild. That's what these are. SAG, the DGA and the WGA, right? Screen actors, directors and writers, all their unions after fighting and squabbling, they all finally agreed that there were, had to be certain rules about who, what, who was credited when and in what order. Okay. So they had this opening, this opening credits here that had to be done in this way. And this is the way it appears. So first, so think about, think about the movies that you, that you know really, really well, and think about how they start with the opening credits and you may start to recognize this order after a while. It's the same for just about all these movies that we watch. You have the production company, a last name, you know, a first name, last name production, um, the title, the lead cast, supporting cast, casting director, editors, production designer. And then it ends on the producer, the writer, and then finally the director. The director is the last name that we get in the opening credits so that we linger with them because they're special, right? Okay. This is the opening credits. This was a specific rule that had to be followed by movies for a really long time until George Lucas, very famously in Star Wars, original Star Wars, good Star Wars, George Lucas very famously left the Directors Guild. He left the union because he was like, piss off, union, because I don't want to start my movie with credits. I want to start my movie with a bang, that big famous ba -ba with Star Wars. I want to start it with the title and I want to start with my opening crawl. Can you imagine if Star Wars opened up with the opening credits like this? It would ruin the whole effect, wouldn't it? Right. Like it's all about that big. You're right in the story right away. That was very novel for its time. OK, like George Lucas was like, no, I'm not doing that. And he was such a young director um, that it's like it kind of didn't matter. Right. And then, of course, his movie became amazing. And then a lot of other movies started kind of following his example. So if you do do opening credits, this is the order in which you appear in which they should appear. Now, as a student filmmaker, you're not going to have all of these. That's OK. That's OK. But you're going to include the ones that you that you do have. OK, when you get to your closing credits, the order appears as thus. You have the director, you have the writer, producer, so on and so forth. Um, if you did do opening credits, then you skip all of these and you go straight to kind of here at the bottom. OK, and this is sort of the order in which you do things. Um, and then you just make them in that order and then you can scroll them all the way through. So I will share this document with you. It's a very nice clean document that you can follow as you create your credits. Now, for student films, there are a few things that you need to think about. So, for example, um, you know, the produ the production company. OK. Um, OK. So the production company is kind of whatever you want it to be. Right. So it can be you and your partner. You can make up a name if you want it to, you know, that kind of thing. Um, a, a name, last name production. It's like, OK, uh huh. Right. But one of these. One of these should be Freestyle Academy because Freestyle Academy produced your films. We're the ones that gave you the equipment. We're the ones that helped you develop the idea. We're the ones that helped you, um, you know, gave you a green light to begin shooting this. We're the ones technically that are distributing it on the Internet. Not that you couldn't put it out on your own YouTube channel. Um, but the point that the, the point I'm making is Freestyle is technically your technically I'm kind of your producer. Um, I'm, I'm not requiring any student to credit me on their films. I have varying levels of input on different films. Sometimes I'm really involved. Sometimes I'm less involved, depending on the film and depending on the students and how much help they need. Um, so you, you're not you're under no obligation to credit me, but you should credit Freestyle Academy because we're the ones who gave you the equipment. 
We're the ones that provided this opportunity for you, so on and so forth. We are your producer in that sense. Um, so one of these first two should be, if you're doing opening credits, one of these first two, first two should be Freestyle Academy. If you're not doing opening credits because you want to pull a George Lucas, that's cool. That's awesome. You're making a short film. You probably don't need opening credits, right? You're, like a, a short film with opening credits is a little ostentatious. It's a little pretentious. Um, those are fancy words for egotistical. Okay. Like it's, it's, it's a little much, it's a little much to, if you're making like a four minute film to have like an opening title sequence. That's like a minute long. It's like, really? Like, do I need this? Come on. Um, so you know, most of you probably won't have opening titles. You might have a, you might have like these first few ones where you have your name and then the title and then you're done, which is fine. And then you can credit everyone else here at the end. Um, but you've got the director, that's you and your partner. You've got the writers, that's you and your partner. You've got the producer, that's me, or produced at Freestyle Academy. Okay, that's the easiest way to do it. Produced at Freestyle Academy. Okay, that takes care of both of these. Okay, and then you've got your actors and then your, you know, so on and so forth. Now, here's what you should not do. Okay, I very famously had a student who did this many, many years ago. Beautiful film, amazing film. Super, super, super cool zombie film. And it was amazing. And we still show clips of it in our recruiting trailer. And it's really, really cool. Um, and if you watch the movie, um, you'll like it. It's good. It was a really cool junior film that they made. But when they got to the credits, the credits were two minutes long. Okay, this is like a six or seven minute film. And the credits were two minutes long because they scrolled so very slowly. Okay, and guess what? It was all the same name. Okay. It was all a film by so and so, you acted by so and so, you know, like it's all the same guy. It's the same guy over again, your props by so and so, you know, but so, just every single thing was his name over and over. It was two minutes of his name scrolling through for every single thing that he did. Okay. First of all, good heavens. Like, come on. Like, I don't need to see your, first of all, it doesn't need to be so slow. OK, like you don't need two minutes long to show your credits, especially when it's all the same name. I get it after the first time I see his name. All right. I can read, believe it or not. All right. So. So what do you do, Mr. Taylor? Well, what do I do? Like if I did the locations, I did the props, I did the casting, I did the writing, I did the directing, I did the camera work, I did the set. I did all those things. I'm supposed to credit all those things, Mr. Taylor. Like I should put my name, right? Yes. But if you did all of those things. Just put a film by Mr. Taylor. OK, and anything that you don't credit expressly to someone else, we will all understand that you did. We will, we will all understand that you did all of the things except for the things that you credited separately. So if I'm working on a film with Bryn and I did everything and Bryn helped me with sound, I would do a film by Matt Taylor. And then I would have the actor's names and then I would include sound by Bryn Kelly. Right. And that now everyone understands I did all the other stuff, but Bryn was the sound person. So that's awesome. OK, so like just credit what needs to be credited, because, again, credits are really important. People care about credits. OK, people you get snubbed in the credits. It hurts and it's it'll create some real it'll, like that's damage. That's a lot of damage. OK, so don't don't make sure make sure you credit people who need to be credited. Think about everyone in your film that needs to be credited. Do you need to give thanks to someone for letting you use their home, their car? their property? Um, did somebody loan you a prop? Did your mom or dad offer you some advice on your script and you took it? Okay. Like credit anyone and everyone that you can. Okay. It's not going to hurt you to like leave, to like put, include people in the credits who deserve to be credited. Okay. If you, if you're filming someone else's idea, it's like maybe, maybe Jamie pitched an idea in class. And he's doing a different film. And I decided to film his film. And Jamie was like, yeah, that's cool. You can film my film. That's cool. OK, I made my own spin on it. OK, but I still got to credit Jamie. So the story is by Jamie. The film is written by me because I changed it and made it my own thing. But the story was by Jamie. That's, that's what a story credit is. OK, it's kind of like the main idea. Only there's a word for it. Story. OK, so make sure that you're crediting all the people that need to be credited in your movie, but don't make it go on for two minutes. OK, think about this. OK, you want people to stay and watch those names. If you're making them go on for hours at a time, people will not stay and watch those names. Likewise, 
if you are ever submitting films to a film festival, for example, there are oftentimes very specific requirements for how long your film must be. Okay. You don't have the time to have two or three minutes worth of credits. In film festivals, you go to a film festival, oftentimes they'll just flash everyone's name at once at the end of the movie during the credits for like five seconds. And then that's it because they're saving as much time as they can for their film, but also for the other films. Uh, in this document that I'm going to share, um, the guy named Zach gives a really good example of this where he's like, I went to a film festival and I was all excited to have people watch my movie and the film in front of me had two minutes worth of credits and everybody left. And then there was nobody around to watch the movie that came next. And that really ticked him off, right? I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen in our freestyle exhibitions. Okay. Don't make your credits go on for two minutes because if you're showing it in an exhibition or in a festival, you might be screwing the next film after you and nobody likes that. Okay. That's not cool. That's not cool at all. Okay. So have the appropriate speed. Okay. We want people to have time to digest your movie as I emphasized earlier. Okay. But you don't need five hours of credits for a film that was only four minutes long. Okay. Make sure, make sure your credits scroll appropriately um, and that you thank everyone that needs to be thanked. So I will share this, uh, uh, this document with you and you will have it to sort of use as a resource as you make your credits um, for your films. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically how you make credits and how you make titles in Adobe Premiere for your films. Are there any questions that I can answer for anybody? or any points of clarification. Okay, so with that in mind, that concludes my lesson and my spiel on titles and credits. I will share this document with you and I will also share this recording. I'll upload it to YouTube. It'll be up there later today so you can follow along with me um, if you need to follow along with me again. Um, but I think you'll get the hang of it once you give it a try if you haven't already. Thanks for being a wonderful class. You guys are great. I love you to pieces. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, and I will see you soon. If anyone needs help or has questions, please feel free to stick around or drop me an email and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Thank you. That is all. Thank you. Farewell. So long. Thank you.